All right, guys, so solving inequalities. So let's uh, take it back to basics real quick and um, just think about, you know, equations versus, uh, versus inequalities. So, of course, this equation here could easily be solved. I'm um, just getting the x by itself, um, subtracting the 4, and then dividing by 2. Okay, and we just get x equals 5. Um, well, if it were an inequality, um, it would basically start out with the same kind of, the same kind of steps. Um, only difference would be at the end we get this uh, greater than or less than symbol. Okay, and this is for linear um, equations and inequalities. And so the main difference, of course, is that the first one just has a simple um, single value solution, while the inequality we have an open circle, right, and we're going to have all numbers less than five, um, gives us an interval, right? Everything from negative infinity up to five, but not including five. Okay, so inequalities you do get these intervals of solutions. Um, but there's, there's definitely some relationship here, and what ends up happening, this 5 over here gets used in this problem as well. We call that a critical value. When we're solving inequalities, you get these critical values, um, and what they do is they kind of tell you numbers that you're going to plot on the number line to, uh, to create your intervals. Okay, and as the problems get more um, complicated, you're going to want to have a method to use, and basically it's going to involve these steps where you're going to solve the equation as if it were an equation, get your critical value, okay, plot the critical value, and then you end up seeing which interval, meaning was it the numbers to the left of that, interval 1 or interval 2, which ones actually satisfied the original um, inequality. Okay, so let's take a look at some more complex ones and, uh, and walk through those. All right, so example 1 here, this is a... Uh, this is going to be a, a quadratic um, that was actually already factored for us, which was nice. So what, um, again, what we want to do first, of course, is we want to solve it. We want to find these critical values. So we're going to solve as if it were an equation. x plus 2 times x minus 3 equaled 0. Okay, and that's going to give us critical values. And again, since it's already factored, that's going to make it nice. Our critical values, of course, are just going to be x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. Okay, so what those do for us is they give you values to plot on the number line, um, negative 2, 3, okay, and when you're plotting them, you don't need to um, be super accurate. Just make sure that the smaller number is on the left and, you know, that kind of thing, but the spacing and stuff this is not that big of a deal. It's just, uh, you know, your own kind of workspace here. So we know at those two values, at negative 2 and at, and at 3, the value of the, the expression actually equals zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna mark that up there because we're gonna see some other things at different times. Now what we're looking for in this problem is where x plus two times x minus three is actually greater than or equal to zero. So the way we're gonna figure that out, we're gonna use what's called a uh, sign chart, okay, to do the interval test. When we actually pick a point from each interval, okay, meaning there's interval one here, which is numbers less than negative two. We have interval two, which are the numbers in between. And then interval three are numbers bigger than three. And what we're gonna do is we are going to check um, an x value from each of those intervals and see if it satisfies the original um, inequality. Okay, so for interval one, let's test for example, um, an interval one is anything to the left of negative two. So let's just try x equals negative three. And when we do the test again, I'm going to be plugging into this form, x plus 2 times x minus 3, and I'm going to be asking myself, is it greater than or equal to 0? Okay, so in interval 1, if x is negative 3, okay, all I'm doing now, and this is kind of the weird part, all I'm asking myself is, is this factor going to be positive or negative, and is this factor going to be positive or negative? I don't really care what the number is, I'm just asking positive or negative. Okay, so if x is negative 3, the first factor, x plus 2, okay, because negative 3 plus 2 is still negative, and negative 3 minus 3 is still negative, okay, so again, I just plugged the x value in there and in there, and I'm asking myself, is a negative times a negative greater than or equal to 0? And a negative times a negative is positive, right, so it is greater than or equal to 0. So in this case, interval 1 works. Okay, when I say it works, I mean it is greater than or equal to zero. So what that means for our number line is that all these numbers work, so they're part of our solution, and negative two itself also works 
because at, at negative two, this thing equals zero, and that is allowed in this case because we have the equal sign there. Okay, now I will test something um, in interval two, any number between negative two and three. So I'm gonna test x equals zero. That's usually an easy one to work with. And again, I'm gonna plug it into this format right here. So if x were zero, the first factor would be positive. The second factor would be negative. Is a positive times a negative greater than or equal to zero? A positive times negative is negative, okay? That is not greater than or equal to zero. So that interval does not work. Okay, and then finally, we will test something in interval three. Um, any number bigger than three, let's just test x equals four. Okay, so go into the factored form. Four plus two is positive. Four minus three is positive. Is a positive times a positive number gonna be greater than or equal to zero? Yeah, right, positive times positive is positive. So if that works as well, okay, the end point three also works because it makes it equal zero, which is allowed in this problem. Okay, so there's our other, let me do this in yellow, there's our other part of our solution. Okay, so that's the solution graph graphically, um, and as written um, in interval notation, our solution would be all numbers, remember interval one works, so everything from negative infinity up to negative two, including negative two, union, which means or, all numbers including three, up to infinity. All right, let's set up another one. Now this one, um, again, it's a quadratic over a quadratic. This one introduces one new thing to the mix here. Um, when we get our critical values, okay, when we solve to get critical values, we need to also account for any restricted values or excluded values, okay? If we have something that makes the denominator zero, that's gonna be a critical value as well. So what I wanna do first though, since numerator and denominator both appear to be factorable, let's factor them. So the numerator, x squared plus three x minus 10, um, factors of negative 10 that add up to three would be x plus five and x minus two. Okay, and the denominator, x squared minus 6x plus 9, is going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3. And I'm going to solve it as if it's an equation. Okay, that's, that's how you get the critical values, right? So critical values, in this case, if you have a fraction equaling 0, if you think about, we could at this point, if we wanted to, I could multiply both sides by this, and the right side would still be 0. Okay, so the things that make a fraction equal zero are things that make the numerator equal zero for that reason. So really, the solutions to the equation are just going to be, oops, I guess we could do that as a highlighter, um, x equals negative five, and x equals two, because again, those would make the numerator zero, which would make the entire um, fraction equal zero. Okay, so those things make it equal zero, but then we also have these restrictions, or excluded values as well, from the denominator. We know that x equals three is a restricted value, okay? That needs to be plotted. These are the critical values over here. It's solutions to the equation and any excluded values. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot those, and then we'll do our same kind of um, interval test. So we're gonna plot now. This time we have three critical values, right? We have, um, in order, we have negative five was the smallest, and then we had two, and then we had three. Okay, so in this example, we actually created three intervals. We have interval one, I'm sorry, four intervals, right? Interval one, interval two, interval three, and interval four. Okay, now here's what you might wanna do. It's gonna be helpful to, to recognize the difference between the critical values, okay? The restriction, when x equals three, this thing is actually undefined. So I'm gonna label that here. That means x equals three is not gonna be a solution no matter what, okay? It's the other two values where the expression actually equals zero. Okay, and in this problem, equaling zero is not allowed either. So those are not gonna be part of the solutions either. Okay, but it's good to just have those kind of labeled out. Let's go ahead and do our interval test. Okay, that's step three. Um, sometimes we call this the spit method, if you ever hear me say that. Um, 
because of the steps. It's a solve, then plot, then interval test. So the spit method is just a way to kind of remember it. Okay, so let's test some values. Let's test in interval one. I need a number less than negative five. I'm not gonna get crazy. I'm just gonna use negative six. Okay, and what I wanna do when I test it, I'm gonna be plugging it into the factored version right here. This is kind of going to be what I'm using to do my tests. Okay, you can do that sign chart with the pluses and minuses using the factored version much easier. Okay, so let's take a look. So just keep this format in mind. So if x were negative 6, that first factor would be um, negative 6 plus 5 is still negative. Negative 6 minus 2 is still negative. The denominator, negative 6 minus 3 is negative. And that one's the same thing. So this entire thing, the numerator is a negative times a negative, which is positive, and the denominator is negative times a negative, which is positive. So the whole thing is positive, okay? In this problem, we want to figure out where is it greater than zero. So then in this problem, that interval works, okay? So negative five, though, the end point of the interval did not work, but the rest of the interval does work. So, so far we have solutions Anything less than negative 5, okay, not including negative 5 itself, though, remember. Okay, now if we want to test something in interval 2, let's test, so between negative 5 and 2, let's test x equals 0 again. That's one of my favorite ones. Okay, and going back up to this format, um, 0 plus 5 is positive, 0 minus 2 is negative. And in the denominator, 0 minus 3 is negative, and 0 minus 3 again is negative. So as a whole, the fraction up top is a negative. The denominator is negative times negative, which is positive. So the entire fraction, negative over positive, is negative. This problem again, we need to be greater than 0. So this interval for this problem does not work. Okay, let's do the other two intervals real quick. Um, something between 2 and 3, so we're going to have to use like 2.5 or something. Okay, let's test x equals 2.5. Okay, into the factored version. Um, the first factor, x plus 5, would be positive. Um, x minus 2 would still be positive. x minus 3 would be negative. And that one's the same. So in this case, the numerator is positive times positive, the denominator, so negative times negative is positive, and then positive over a positive, of course, is still positive. So that interval works, but remember, the endpoints of the interval do not work. So we're going to do open circles on the endpoints, but we're going to include the interval itself. Between 2 and 3 works, it's just 2 and 3 themselves do not work. Right, and then we'll check one more um, interval, something bigger than 3, let's use 4. So if we test x equals 4 in that final interval, the first factor, x plus 5 is positive, x minus 2 is still positive, um, x minus 3 would still be positive, okay, and there's two of those. Um, so this whole thing is positive over positive, which ends up positive okay so this interval works as well okay because again this problem was all about being positive so our solutions okay from the intervals that we see the green intervals on the graph the solutions are going to be anything from negative infinity up to negative 5 not including negative 5 okay then everything from 2 to 3 not including those and then also from 3 to infinity. Okay, so we kind of had to just jump over 3, right? Even though the last two intervals were both yes, we still need to write them separately because the value 3 itself is a restricted value. All right, let's take a look at another one here. So here's example 3. Um, x minus 2 over the absolute value of x plus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so let's solve it. Let's find those critical values. So x minus 2 over the absolute value of x plus 3 less than or equal to 0. OK, 
okay? So again, the solution to the equation, since it's a fraction, it would equal zero whenever the numerator equals zero. So x equals two is going to make the thing equal zero. That's gonna be one of our critical values. And in this case, since it's a rational function with a denominator, we're, we are gonna have a um, restricted value whenever the denominator is zero. So if x were negative three, that's gonna be a restricted value or an excluded value. Okay, because again, that would cause us to have a zero in the denominator. Okay, so those are our two critical values, positive two and negative three. So let's get those plotted and then we can conduct our interval test. Okay, so the negative three needs to come first, then positive two. In this case, we're giving ourselves three intervals to check. And let's see what happens. So if we start doing some test points, if I test x equals negative four, and let's just plug it into the, uh, in this case there, we didn't have to factor anything, it was kind of already broken down. So let's just plug right into the original format and see what happens. So if x is negative four, the numerator would be a negative number. And the denominator is the absolute value of negative four plus three. The absolute value of that is going to be positive. So as a whole, the fraction is a negative number. Now for this problem, we want to be less than or equal to zero. So that first interval works, okay? But let's keep in mind, the value negative three made the expression undefined. The value of two made the expression equal zero. So what that means for us is that the actual value at negative three needs to be an open circle because that's a restricted value, okay? Now let's test something in the middle. Let's test x equals zero. All right, so x equals zero, all right? So the numerator, x minus two would be negative. The denominator is an absolute value, it would be positive. A negative over a positive is negative. So that interval worked, okay? Now negative three was open. This whole interval works. Two itself works this time because we have this equal sign under the um, less than sign. So negative two can be a closed circle. And finally, if we want to test something in interval um, three, let's test x equals three. Okay, so if x equals three, the numerator would be three minus two, which is positive. And the denominator three plus three is six, its absolute value is positive. So the entire expression would be a positive. In this case, that's not what we want. Okay, so that would be a no. Okay, so as far as solutions for this one, for interval notation, we are going from negative infinity up to negative three. Don't include negative three. And then we are picking it right back up at negative three to two, and we do include positive two. Okay, so that's that. Um, the old spit method, solve plot interval test.